what's the typical long-term weight loss? What does that look like from any any of these mix of, of kind of dietary strategies? How much could someone expect to lose and actually keep off, keep off over the long term, say 12 months or 24 months? You know, the, the general population that's left to their own devices is highly unsuccessful um, for weight loss, unfortunately. So the statistic is roughly 80% of the general population will just gain the weight back. Um, and so if, if we can kind of take a look at why that is, it, it's because of the lack of individualization of programs. So if you look at the, just the NIH standard, they have a standard 1200 <laughs> calorie diet. Um, and uh, the, they have a standard 15 or 1600 calorie diet. So one's for women, one's for men. And typically in hospital settings, the 1200 calorie diet is, is prescribed just blanketly. And the 1500 calorie diet is prescribed blanketly to uh, men and women respectively. <clears throat> and so the big problem with that, I, I think that when you prescribe a cookie cutter diet that is anywhere from one to 2000 calories, less than what somebody is habitually taking in, mm. the success rate of those diets are going to be very low because um, diet composition and certainly things like eating enough protein to stave off a phenomenon called coll collateral fattening, which is uh, another rabbit hole. Um, I think that that's a recipe for gaining weight back. Um, but you know, if we can eliminate just prescribing cookie cutter diets with, um, suboptimal macronutrition, suboptimal diet composition, suboptimal, uh, capacity for preserving satiety and suboptimal individual tailoring to people's preferences. I, th I really do believe that in order to stick to a diet, you have to be consuming the, your favorite foods. And I don't mean your favorite junk foods. <laughs> I mean your favorite foods across the groups. And so when that's in place, then we can look at half a percent to a percent drop in body weight. I would focus on the half a percent over the course of a year. 25-ish um, pounds, 25 to 50 pounds in a year. I think that that is not unrealistic, but I like the idea of focusing on half a pound a week, 20, 24, 25 pounds a year, because if you reach your goal in one to two years, then it's like hallelujah, because you spent 10 to 20 years gaining the extra body fat. And so to reverse all that in the span of one to two years, I think that's fantastic. You mentioned satiety there. Imagining the person who's listening and thinking, I've tried this, Alan. I have incredible cravings. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, they finish dinner, they, f they feel, they don't feel like they're satiated. They go to the freezer and get ice cream or grab a block of chocolate and eat the, the whole thing. What do you want people to think about with regards to satiety and feeling full if they're having difficulty with that and they're finding that these cravings are kind of derailing them? Okay. Okay. So there's not a lot of systematically investigated answers to this question. So I'm going to give you my perspective. That's going to be inevitably a bit speculative. I feel that, and, and I've observed in the field that when you can structure a diet to include meals that the, the subject truly enjoys and looks forward to, then their cravings or excess undue cravings and, and appetite actually goes down because each meal is much more of a fulfilling experience. Do you need to be an excellent chef to, to achieve that? Not necessarily excellent, but 
<laughs> you have to have a working <laughs> a working capability of it. And so that's why it really does help for people to know how to you don't have to be a gourmet, but if you can prepare your own food and know how to make it enjoyable and make it stuff that you truly look forward to. If you look forward to each meal and you enjoy each meal, when you're done with it, you're going to be more satisfied, more satiated. You're you're not going to feel like, okay, I just kind of ate what felt like half a meal that I didn't really like. I'm still freaking hungry. It's time to go rummaging for other stuff. So I think that the lost factor in here, other than, hey, enough protein, enough fiber, and uh, not not and, and weight loss, that's not too rapid. So you need to find a way to have, maintain, build on the joy that you're getting from your food, even within the context of dieting. So, so yeah, dieting absolutely. is not forgo- foregoing the joy. It's not like let's you know grit our teeth and just get through this. That that's not going to be sustainable. Yeah, you can only do that for like weeks at a time. But if you actually look forward to your meals, and you can integrate that with a physical activity or training routine that you also enjoy, or at least not dread then that's kind of the money mm-hmm. and that's like the, the the more i guess sustainable path where you're slowly losing weight you're enjoying your food but what about the person and i'm sure there's people out there that they just want to l- eat quite loosely and then every two or three months do a week or two weeks of severe calorie restriction and then to kind of go up and down like that is that is that another possible strategy uh, uh it's not recommended. I mean, the uh, the psychological impact of of weight cycling is probably the the overlooked negative. Um, so yo yo dieting, yeah, definitely not recommended. Um, there is a a culture within our fitness niche that looks at uh, people's best day for the photo shoot day as being kind of the ideal, and people cultivate this false idea in their mind that they have to somehow sustain that. And I think that's, that's a big part of the problem. 